I remember the first time I worked with you. Yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, with Ryan Keeley. With you and Ryan Keeley. Mm-hmm. And I remember we actually did an interview with you. And I remember I came home to my parents that day and I was like, that girl's going to be a fucking star. <laughs> like I knew it right away. I was like, she is like, because I was not expecting you to be that articulate oh. or that smart. Like you were beautiful, obviously, but like when we sat down and we actually talked, I was like, holy shit, this girl's this girl's smart. Thank you. Like what the fuck? And mm. I was like... And I was so right. <laughs> As I always am. You know what's crazy? <laughs> um, I actually, I, I bumped into uh, Rocco Safredi at oh, Avian. Yeah. And he and I worked together one time. And it has been, he has spoken highly of me everywhere. We we worked together once and then I shot for him with Tony Rebus, actually. Right. Um, but he would always look at me and say that I was I was an energy that he wasn't, Ready for? Right. She didn't anticipate it, and he said, "You don't break." Yeah. And I said, "No, you're right. I don't." But that's not a Tory thing, right? That's a that's a Shelley thing. That's, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I go by. But yeah. Um. Uh. And I. That's. It was really nice to hear that that part of me had come across. Yeah. You know, and and I feel like my most valuable thing that I bring to the table in this industry has nothing to do with my porn performance. Right. And as I've gotten older, I started to really realize that that part is the coolest part of me, mm-hmm. not my sex. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am trying to bring that to the forefront and and try and help our, you know, everyone out. Like, hey guys, it's okay to be you. It's okay. It's okay. Like when you're feeling weak, that doesn't mean you are weak. It means actually means you're strong if you allow this weakness, you know, let it come through your body and pass out the other side. Yeah. I know? mean, showing vulnerability is one of the bravest things you can do. Yeah. And we've been taught and trained, you know, for for so long to just shove it all down and, yeah. and not feel it and cover it with booze and pills and drugs or whatever money, whatever it may be. Right. But, you know, that's not, I mean, like there, I mean, it's like having a good cry. You know, letting that out is nothing. There's nothing like more healing than that. And, and you I, have to walk through that pain. You have to feel oh, it yeah. in order to get past it. Because if you never face it, and if you never accept it, and it you never grows. let it grows and festers, it festers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just like an actual infection in your body. It's yeah. the same thing. Exactly. You have to take care of it, or otherwise it'll kill you. Yes. But I feel like that ties into we were talking earlier. It ties into all the different. Things that are going on in society right now. Yeah, I mean, look at these people who are shooting up schools. Yeah, look at these people who are taking their own lives. Look at these. This sadness is just festering in our country, and I feel like social media definitely has a hand in it. Mm-hmm. But it's also this old, burnt out idea or concept that we need to save face. Like. Yeah. We need to put out this pretty picture of ourselves and we can't be real. We have all these shows called like the real and it's like full of bullshit. Yes. And um, reality shows are totally nonsense. Are, they're not reality they're at all. They're not real at all. But you know, we want to, we want to shut down, we want to shut down things in our industry and people in our industry and allow things, you know, other things to take place because apparently it's more safe to have guns than pornography. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I mean just uh, yeah, just a couple of days ago, Florida decided to not debate the gun control issue, but they decided to <laughs> declare pornography a health crisis. Which <laughs> health is just, crisis. This is just insane. Okay, we're healthier than any other general population in a in a office space. I would say by a lot because of the fact that we are so strict on ourselves yeah. with how we run our business. I mean, when I started, we had 30 day testing. Yeah. And despite the fact that there's a minimal actual change between testing every 30 days and testing every two weeks, we took that minimal change and said, fine, we're yeah. going to do it. Yeah. And we dropped it down to two weeks. And now people might whine about it. They might complain about it. But all I have to say is we have literally done everything above and beyond that we could. Mm -hmm. And you want to look at us like, we're a health crisis. I think guns are a health crisis. (laughs) You think? (laughs) Um, I saw this uh, this video of this high school girl. Did you see this video of her on the news Mm -mm. coming out saying... I don't care if they won't talk about gun gun control. I'm going to. We need to. If the government is going to say say, "Oh, I'm sending my thoughts and prayers," and that's all they have mm-hmm. to say, we need to do it for ourselves. Yeah. 
uh, she was standing up there speaking from her toes and you could just, I didn't, I, it, whether you watched on Instagram or YouTube or big on your TV screen, you could feel her and she was bawling. Uh, she was there. Yeah. She was there for this shooting and she's standing up there speaking clearly, coherently, articulately, and with more sense than I've seen from our government <laughs> as of reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she was so assertive and so strong and so emotional at the same time. And I'm like, Look at this powerhouse of a yeah. of a child, and and look at how beautiful and how much she had to go through in order for those colors to shine. And I'm like, yeah. let's listen to her. Let's let's yeah. follow her. I mean, if there's any silver lining that you can see out of this horrific fucking tragedy and the other school shootings that have happened is that it's directly affecting this nation's youth. And those that's the next generation. Yeah. And those are the people that are going to be able to vote in a few years. And those are the people that are going to vote out these fucking archaic government officials who are in the pockets of the NRA right. and who want to keep guns out there because you know they want the fucking money and all the bullshit and the corruption that's happening like you are, I mean, like, you know, you've got the nation's youth who are, like, against all of this. And I think things are going to change drastically. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.